Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio and welcome to episode 100 of Luthier's Question Time. This is the live stream where I answer your questions about guitar building. Predominantly electric guitars, but uh, you know, there's always a little bit of uh, uh, variation and variety and fun stuff throughout. I am currently worried about the Atom Mini Pro ISO, which is uh, the thing with through which I'm streaming to you guys today. And uh, yeah, just before we went on, on, on uh, went live, the power supply started fizzing at me. Power supplies should not fizz. Uh, I appear to have found the position in which it is happy, but uh, much like a feral cat, I am somewhat trepidatious at this point. Uh, we shall see. If I suddenly disappear, let me know uh, in the chat and uh, I will uh, realize that that's turned off and uh, we will, yeah, start again. Okay. Anyhow, yes, this is episode 100. I've been doing this now for about a year on and off. Um, we've done quite a few of these things at this point, and uh, you all know exactly what has happened. I'm going to kick click close here when YouTube tells me to insert an advert. You guys are going to, if you want to both support the show and guarantee an answer, click on that super chat icon uh, down the bottom. It says show your support for Crimson Guitars Extras, etc. And uh, I will absolutely respond to your question. And if I don't, you will be allowed to shout at me in the comments. Uh, other than that, uh, I do check the, the standard chat and we will see if I can uh, uh, if it's, yeah, if I can see the question, and that is a big problem as we get bigger, more and more people come through. Okay, uh, Anonymous Botch immediately talking with, uh, uh, he says, tonight's mold choice is automaton 14 year port cask. Okay, that sounds, I, I, I merely have some, uh, I want to say dehydrated. Caffeine-free coffee, can you believe it? Anyway, we've got David Oddy, Lisa, Guitar Addicts Workshop, Anonymous Botch, Robert R. How you doing, Robert? Uh, we have got Stephen Hatch, Creeverai, Paul Needs, who was the first comment that I can see. He says, hi, to everybody, just presenting a note to explain my absence. As at Mark Davies has said, the football is on. Uh, even though I'm Welsh and even though the English press will add her on of England when I lost track of that towards the end, but uh, yes, uh, apparently there is some sort of minor football, English football thing, English football, worldwide football, because the Americans have decided to call rugby something else. Find me in the comments. Anyhow, so we're probably going to have a few fewer people this evening because uh, there actually is, as crazy it seems, as crazy as it seems, some sort of a crossover between guitar players and football fans. It's not that common, but it does happen. Anyway, let's have a look. Queries, questions, comments, criticisms. Creve Rye immediately saying, are we talking about American football or soccer? Uh, I, it's, it's the World Cup, apparently. Uh, okay. Alfred Crane. Alf Alfred Kane says hi from a cold wheelchair. It is fairly chilly here this evening as well. Uh, it certainly is. Okay. Now, <laughs> Gareth Travis says caffeine free. I almost dropped my fret file. Uh, don't do that. Fret files are made out of hardened steel and if dropped in exactly the wrong way, uh, you could have some trouble. Uh, no, it is uh, a good thing for my throat when I'm going to be talking for an hour and a half or so, uh, which funnily enough, water doesn't seem to do the job and it tastes okay. Just doesn't keep me up because it is 8 p.m. UK time at this point. Okay, uh, Mike Vickery, is there a collective noun for us viewers like Crimsonites? I like Crimsonites. We have heard, um, well, I don't know, you guys, uh, Crim sons and daughters, that's from Ape Song, who also is coming from cold, a cold place, although that's Paris, I think, uh, or at the very least France, if I recall. <laughs> okay, round is equal baseball. That's Johan van Lupi. Crimsonistas. That sounds a little bit like we work in a an Apple shop or something, maybe. But uh, there we go. Okay, Robert R. 
Um, says, I've been doing okay, but frustrated because it seems that not many people want to work over here. Wanted to get a shop built and I can't find a contractor. We, are ha we have a huge issue um, with contractors at the moment. Very much so. Very, very, very much so. Uh, Rob Tootle says, Ben, did you try that JD with the apple sauce? I did indeed. It is incredible. Uh, far too much sugar. Far too much sugar for me. Uh, the JD is the um, cinnamon uh, whiskey, and that in a, 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 a glass of apple sauce, apple sauce, apple juice tastes just like, uh, well, it's an apple pie kind of a thing, and I love apple pie. But uh, yeah, after about four or five sips, I had uh, a sugar headache. I'm diabetic and I can't have too much in one hit. But anyway, um, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that present. It's uh, something to sip and, uh, and enjoy in moderation. Okay, Vicky Johnson says, Hi Ben, now that Crimson are no longer making kits, could you suggest somewhere to get one, please? I was talking to Trevor Wilkinson the other week uh, and uh, his kits that they make are absolutely mind-blowing. They're really good quality. Uh, I'm hoping to stock them and I've told him that I would very much like it if he would start doing an uncut kit or two uh, in the same, uh, well, like, like we have done. And he was like, Ben, but I can't do that, you do that. And I'm like, yeah, we've, we've, stopped, we've stopped kits for now. We want to concentrate on guitars and on museums and all that stuff. Um, other than that, uh, of course, um, there is the big American one who the, I've just forgotten the name of, but you will let me know. <sighs> I'm so tired. I am mind-blowingly wiped out. Uh, we've been moving my daughter's bedroom uh, from one room to another, which involved building the room. Um, DIY is not me, but it's fine. We're all good. Uh, Anthony Cunliffe says, seven years ago in a Q&A, you talked about ebony nuts. I can't remember in the last few years if you've done anything with nuts like that. Is only ebony... Is ebony the only wood that would work? No, um, any harder wood would work for nut making, but the sound that you get out of that is uh, is muted. It is jazzy. It is woody. It is uh, yes. Violins use ebony nuts. Wow, I'm digging back. I'm fairly sure that is the truth. Uh, Hold on, I've got a book right here. And, uh, hold on. Show me a picture of a nut. Come on, they're all bodies. Nope, that's the back of the head stuff. Okay, that's a pearwood nut on this. Uh, uh, Via de Gamba. That's ebony or something similar. So yes, basically uh, pearwood, ebony, even maple, hard maple, rock maple could work, but you know, absolutely functional and, and, and fine. If you want that, it's a sound with a, a bit of a slower release and uh, it's got less immediacy, less attack, uh, but you know, it's valid. I really should do a, a, a comparison, ebony versus bone versus brass versus, uh, I don't know, uh, Tusk or something from uh, uh, Graftec, I suppose. I like Graftec. Fan of that company. Okay, we've got our first super chat of the evening from Sweet Tea Guitars. He says, hello, brother. Uh, hey, man. He says, I can't stay, but I wanted to say hi. I like to refer to us as family. Peace and love. Have a great evening. Got to finish the next video. Crack on. Um, and yeah, thanks for the support, dude. I really do appreciate it. Okay, now. Crimson Nistas. Hold on, I saw some question marks there. Okay, uh, jboogie164 says, I recently purchased some Crimson High Build Oil. Do I have to use the penetrating oil before the high build? Absolutely not. They can be used uh, separately. Uh, it's absolutely fine. You can use penetrating oil to get a similar sort of result, just with far more applications probably twice as many applications, uh, or you can use the high build, you just won't, ha it won't have penetrated quite as deeply into the wood. In some cases, I would suggest 
only use the high build oil. In fact, uh, for example, when you're going over a, a stain on a maple or something, you don't need the penetrating. Um, penetrating is predominantly for for walnuts and um, mahoganies and softer woods like that, for example. So yes, uh, essentially the penetrating oil is a thinned down version of the high build. Okie dokie. Uh, Mr. Waffles says, my heater is doing nothing out here in my shop. It's damnably cold here in the PNW, I'm assuming Pacific Northwest. Um, it very much, well, here we go. Now, Forward three five one WPI email us to uh, stream at crimsonguitars.com is probably where that would get the most. Well, yeah, I will check that. Um, MGS Nashville says, Ben, when are you finally going to jump on the Super Asselex train? I don't even know what that is, except it's got the word ass in it. Her, her, her. Um, yeah, let me know in the comment what that is. Uh, Gareth Travis suggesting rooibos tea with honey and lemon for that throat. That's a very good shout. Okay. Uh, Creever Rice says, how about not supporting FIFA after those controversies in the past weeks and months? This is the thing. It was like I had a conversation with uh, uh, my diabetic nurse and uh, they were saying, okay, Ben, so you know, here's a really good way for you to uh, um, reduce your your sugars uh, and your bloods and all that uh, even more. And I really am uh, on a very, very good level. I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I'm <sighs> relatively well behaved and have got myself under check, which is great. She actually gave me a round of applause the last time I spoke to her, but uh, she's like, this is, this is, this is a really good way to really sort yourself out with the old diabetes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, go on then. I'm, I we need to do anything. It, Except for exercise too much, but you know, it's like just quit drinking. Uh, what if I don't drink any uh, at, at all? You know, in any case, I'm, I might have one unit a week, if that. Uh, and she's like, ah, sorry, mate. And this is the exact same thing with Creva here, Creva I here, and FIFA. A lot of us don't support FIFA in any case, and I think anybody here doesn't but anyway it is what it is uh, there have been a lot of controversies and uh, and issues that even I a complete non-football fan have noticed so there we go Jim Beam Vanilla Coke Zero hmm that actually sounds fun Stephen Hatch Creever, what did I miss? You're not making guitar kits anymore? No, mate. Uh, no, we have, uh, we've axed the kits for now. Well, not for now. We've axed the kits. Essentially, uh, the people making the kits are now concentrating more on uh, uh, far more profitable sides of the business. But uh, it's mainly that we were trying to make the kits far too well. And uh, we're going to be concentrating on guitars. Uh, rather than stopping halfway, essentially. Uh, Lisa Harshberger, thank you very much, Lisa. She's been a member for five months, says, I'm enjoying the extra videos now that you've added Josh and Sophia. Also, thanks for the names on. Hey, I'm glad that got you. Chris really loved his course. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I always feel slightly awkward signing things for people, but, you know, it's, uh, it's cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, we are very much enjoying... Uh, putting out extra content. There's been a dearth of guitar building. There's been less guitar building videos, at least, in the last couple of weeks, and that is not going to stay the same. Uh, I'm hoping for two or maybe even three videos a week uh, to be guitar building, uh, particularly. But uh, the issue that we've got is a... Um, uh, well, I've got multiple builds on the go, and you're not seeing all of them and yeah Sophia's doing something as well Josh is going to be doing something we're going to be filming Matt as well and maybe even Sean so there's going to be a lot of stuff happening and I'm very very excited I'm very excited for 2023 I had to ask my daughter which year it was this morning 
Yeah. Big Unit Guitar says, Hey Ben, I posted a video of my new bench and next build. If you're bored and looking for something to watch, lol, I'm pretty sure you're never bored. Uh, I am never bored. But, again, that's what I'm looking for. But I do fancy checking that out. Okay. Cheers for the heads up, dude. Okay. Lisa Harshberger says, use sugar-free apple juice. Is there such a thing? I've genuinely never seen such a thing. Uh, if that is the case, very cool. Now. Dum -de -dum. Barry Christian, a work colleague's father is collecting old unwanted tools for a charity in Africa. Would you be interested in helping? I know the charity. I work with them fairly regularly in any case. Uh, you're talking about TWAM, uh, Tools with a Mission, or uh, Tools for Self-Reliance. I think I got that right. Um, they're the UK charities. Now, a, a lot of the tools that they have donated to them are not actually uh, of any use to anybody in Africa. Uh, they're not going to send, for example, a Norris smoother plane or something like that. It's worth far more to them in cash terms. And both of those uh, charities ship container loads of tools out to, the, to, to Africa and various things and do a very good job. But each container, especially now, costs a huge amount of money and they need to generate cash as well as have the tools donated. So uh, I will, on a semi-regular basis, or have done, uh, less so recently, as we're slowing down a little bit on the vintage tool business, but uh, we have gone and bought a load of tools. I have thousands, tens of thousands of pounds worth of tools from them that aren't suitable to go out, but giving them money that will then be uh, able to pay for the containers. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a good cause and uh, something I'm well aware of. Okay, uh, Graham B says, Hi Ben, have you got any suggest suggestions to an alternative to tight bond, as it is very hard to find over here in New Zealand? Uh, I use Alkaline Professional Wood Glue, which is made actually in South Africa. If I recall. No, manufactured by Franklin International USA. Hmm. Where did I get South Africa? Genuinely, I thought I've been laboring under a misapprehension here. Uh, anyhow, this is the glue that I use all the time. I, we do have tight bond at, at headquarters because we get bigger, uh, we get we can buy it in five liters, uh, etc. But uh, for all of my personal builds, I've been using Alkaline Professional for ages. Uh, we do ship it, but I would suggest you try and find somewhere, someone that can ship it from closer to home, as it were. Now. The alkaline professional, at least, is if I am you know, to be trusted, which I'm not so sure on at this point, uh, the alkaline professional is also, uh, it's the same recipe, it's a licensed tight bond recipe called tight bond 50, which is the glue that Gibson have been using forever, apparently. Uh, I'm not so sure you should trust me anymore, though. So. There we go. Anonymous Botch, a question. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Another super chat says, hi Ben. No, no question. Hi, hi Ben, no question. <laughs> Just to say it was great to meet you last week. Hey man, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, I, yeah, me too. And uh, that, yeah, bloody hell, that show was incredible. I, um, yeah, it was the last guitar show for a while. I think the next one's in February or March time. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna miss that for a while. But um, yeah, guitar shows, meeting a whole bunch of people, including your, your good self, and lusting after a load of guitars. It's getting out of control. It really is. Anyway. Big unit guitars. Talking, saying, is anybody else having issues with super chats? I can't send uh, paid posts or anything. Uh, there's one from Van Shank. Guitar says, I wasn't able to do to chat as I was finishing winding a 
Tilly neck pickup. Do not stop winding a bobbin to talk to me because you will break it. But uh, greetings, salutations, and thank you for the support. And I hope your pickup turned out all right. Um, now, uh, warmth, warmth is the thing. Okay. So uh, jboogie164 says, I recently purchased a Warmoth body and neck with the Wizard profile. They really make some great stuff. They do make some great stuff. They are the company that I was trying to... Um, provide an alternative to, shall we say, uh, with what we were doing at Crimson. And uh, there's just... I have had to choose to pick my battles, really. Uh, we've got multiple different businesses going on under the same roof, multiple different bits and pieces that we're doing, and the kits, while fun, uh, just haven't... Well, we've had to take... Yeah, it has had to take a back seat. But it's all good. There's a lot else happening. Gareth Trevor says, Ben, you still have a certain guild we must check out and dissect. Okay, so that guitar does not belong to me. Uh, that guitar is one that... Uh, <laughs> very sadly... So it's got sentimental value for the client. And we're doing a full refin. Uh, so that beautiful vintage thing is going to end up looking white and sparkly and new. And uh, we're changing the bridge out and all sorts of stuff. And it's really actually quite distressing. But in the end, as I say and have said many times, the guitar is just a tool. And if it's not a tool that you want to pick up and use, then either get rid of it or modify it until it is exactly that, no matter if it's a vintage uh, tool or guitar or, or what. So it is what it is. Um, Okay. David Oddy, Ben, electric toothbrush, any good for polishing frets? There are a few questions that I have not heard before. I do not know. I do not know. Uh, I doubt it. Uh, however, yeah, if you've got a if you've got a sort of medium brush, electric toothbrush, and put chrome polish, autosol chrome polish, perchance, uh, on the bristles and on the frets, it might actually work. Genuinely, might that? Wow, <laughs> I don't know. That might be pretty cool. <sighs> the Ginger Drum Tech. Hi Ben, I'm saving up to do an acoustic guitar building three month course. Or would I be able to do a hand tool only building course? In a limited fashion, yes. Uh, the limited fashion being, I would seriously not suggest you do the thicknessing by hand. Uh, we would uh, do that with the uh, the big wide belt sander to get the uh, the sides and the plates, the, the back, the front, etc., uh, to thickness. But everything else actually could be done by hand if you really wanted to. Uh, it might take a tad longer than three months, but probably not. I think if you've got the skill to say, hey, I want to do it hand tool only, you, you probably already have some skills with a Z. Uh, so it is probably, probably doable. And the guys at Crimson are going to smack me upside the back of the head for saying that. Uh, and the other thing is bending the, bending the sides. I would suggest you use a, a bending jig, which is just so much easier. Uh, that being said, a bending iron is fine. Uh, that's how I learned, and it you know can be a, a tad frustrating, but should be fine. Now, bum ba dum. Now. Lisa, how much is the round rest costs that we've been seeing in the videos, please? Round rest? 
do the round rest. I don't know what you're asking for there, Lisa, sorry. Um, I think there's a typo. Uh, lignum vitae on an acoustic read quite well, self-lubricating as it is. Uh, lignum is a very good wood for, for acoustics. Uh, it's very hard, very, uh, well, reflecting of the sound. So there we go. <sighs> Would a six day course be sufficient to learn how to do a Les Paul top, carve a neck and do a level crown polish properly? In this financial climate, a two week course is too expensive. Um, I do, I think that we generally say two weeks for somebody who wants to do a, uh, a guitar like that. However, it has been done in six days before and you do have some experience. So I think that you should be able to do it. Um, basically, you need to talk to Ricky, tell him that we've spoken via the live stream. And it's something that uh, could be done, you might have to make a few sacrifices along the way. So for example, you might not actually get the guitar strung up in the end, but that's something you can do at home. So yeah, if you're not worried about, for example, doing the wiring and uh, installing bridge ferrules or whatever, uh, then yes, absolutely. Uh, if you absolutely have to finish it with us, even though a six day course is an extra day and an extra hour every day. Uh, so it's essentially, I think the five day course is 35 hours. I think the six day is actually 54 or something like that. Um, yeah, it's a significant difference. You should be able to do it. We've got 103 viewers and only 41 likes. Come on, people. Okay, Mr. Tuxedo 89, any suggestion for a back color? Les Paul custom with a flamed maple top. The front will be dark tobacco sunburst. Back is black Karina. I mean, I quite like the look of black Karina just on its own, but uh, I would go for something darker myself uh, to go with the uh, dark tobacco sunburst. Uh, but yeah, what floats your boat? Uh, Jimmy Penrose says Carvin and Kiesel stopped making kits too. That's, I mean, they, that's the same thing. They had to decide, okay, what are we going to do? Um, make kits or make guitars. And they've done very well making the guitars at the moment, haven't they? A still guy says, Ben, I recently tried out your way of putting new strings on and I absolutely love it. It's way faster and easier than the traditional way. Uh, thanks for that tip. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I, I do not think that it is original. I, it's not my, I don't think it's my idea. I have a vague memory of somebody showing me at some point. Uh, hell, it might have even been a video somewhere, but uh, lost in the mists of time. So, yeah. George Davis, can you update us on your GGBO build? What is GGBO? What is this thing that you talk about? Uh, <laughs> GGBO, GGBO is coming on quite nicely. I'm actually not finished, which is really frustrating considering it's due in six days. But um, yeah, it's gonna be incredible. And that's what I'm going to say about that. Uh, okay, hold on. Somebody there, round things, pucks, guitar dogs, Johan van Lupi. Um, that is a very good point. Okay, so those are bench cookies. That's the one. I don't actually think I have any in here, although they're, they're supposed to be a box here somewhere. Hmm. Uh, yeah, bench cookies, they are... Uh, buy a company called Bench Dogs, I think, and uh, I use them a hell of a lot. We are going to be making a slightly more environmentally friendly version uh, with the Crimson brand at some point. But uh, but yeah, uh, they're very cool and I'm actually finding that I use them a hell of a lot. Uh, I'm There's a lot less contact between the guitar and what's going on on the bench etc so uh, just makes the whole thing safer if you've got fret ends down there or a scalpel blade or you know whatever even a little bit of glue has been known to absolutely destroy uh, a guitar uh, for that matter 
without matter. I actually think that we need to, there you go, put those on every single student's bench because they are so cool, or at least our version of them. Lisa, would there be use in guitar work for a 3D pantograph? Absolutely. Uh, a good quality pantograph or panto router uh, completely replaces the need for a CNC machine and makes something that you can uh, repeat ad infinitum if you need to. So if you're trying to do uh, repetitious work, but you are not interested in CNC machines, or CNC machines are fine, it's the CAD that's the issue uh, for many creatives, then yeah, a Panto router is 100% a, uh, a valid option. Redhead17, hi Ben, I only got around to looking at great guitar giveaway site the other day and may I suggest adding a paragraph about the guitars and maybe a spec sheet if known. Most of them do have specs on them uh, if you actually click on the guitar. Uh, however, uh, there does need to be a little bit more and uh, we're, con we're constantly upgrading that site and it's a trial by fire at the moment but uh, genuinely incredible how people are supporting it and uh, I'm yeah, you know, great guitar giveaway is the name is apt. Uh, I'm looking for great guitars uh, to uh, to pass on while also doing great things, i.e., raising money to create a museum, which is uh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I've bought far more guitars than the profit uh, has dictated, so I'm in a little bit of trouble for that. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, there we go. All right, people, I need questions or I'm going to go home to bed. Feed me. Oh, hey, Volcan Essence coming with a super chat. Hey, Ben, happy 100th. Thank you very much. Um, I really love these streams. Here's my question. Could you describe your method for binding round curves like at the lower horn of a Les Paul? Cheers. V. All right, man. Um, so actually... That has changed in recent years. Uh, I used to just uh, just go at it and trust that my binding was relatively fresh and would take that curve. Um, but in recent years, I've actually started using a um, a little bit of heat. Now, I say a little bit because it really needs to be a little bit. Uh, a small hot air gun or something like that, uh, maybe even holding the binding up against a light bulb or something really gentle, uh, just enough to uh, give it a little bit more flexibility. If you go over, and I would run some tests beforehand so you see where that point is, um, if you go over then it actually completely loses shape and it becomes a sort of squig squiggly mess that you don't want. But uh, yeah, the heat is your friend here. Uh, and I would do that, yeah, I would do that every single time. Uh, Adam Mono says, hey Ben, you make guitars for a living. Do you need to pinch yourself from time to time? Absolutely. It's not only that, I, I've, if all I did was sit in a workshop and make guitars every day, and if I got to do that, I would be absolutely over the moon. It's just, okay, this is my job. I make guitars. It's fucking amazing. That's cool. On top of that, I get to make videos and talk to, well, there's a hundred plus of you at the moment. Um, I just punched my, uh, my laptop. Um, the, I get a tremendous sense of fulfillment from being able to help people and from people being able to... Uh, there are so many people out there who say, hey Ben, uh, when they see me at shows and things, you know, I build guitars because of you, I, or I, I felt that I could build them because you make it look so easy. And I'm, well, it is easy. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And that makes me feel really, 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 really happy. Um, so... <laughs> Big Unit's shouting me about a super chat I missed. Oh, sorry about that, I'll get to that. Um, 
And then on top of that, we've got this museum, which is a completely different thing coming up. And uh, uh, I'm, I am just playing. We had a video where you'll see the fun. It's coming out on the main channel next week. I went a little bit crazy for Great Guitar Giveaway. And it was the Black Friday sales. And I went on uh, a guitar shop's website and I bought, I think, eight guitars in the end. <sighs> Sam, Sophia, Josh and myself opened most of them on video and at the end of that I think off camera was like can, can you believe that we get paid to do this this is our job and it was just it is incredible so yes I pinch myself on a daily basis. Uh, Big Unit, I'm sorry I missed your super chat. He says, hi Ben, any live stream builds planned for the holiday week? Absolutely not. Nada, nux, nothing, no. Um, I am actually going to try and take some time off, um, which will be interesting. We'll see how that goes. But um, no, I am going to be chilling out a little bit. Uh, now, that being said, I do miss working in this workshop. I'm doing a lot of work from uh, from headquarters at the moment. So I do. Hmm, that's interesting. OK, uh, I do. I would like to get back to doing some live stream builds at some point. Um, 4351 WPI says, uh, at least on my computer, the main banner is very large and does not move. So it makes it hard to see the pictures. That is good information. On mine and on my phone, there's absolutely no issues. Come on. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting. Uh, essentially, I think that you've got an older browser per, per chance, uh, but I'm gonna have a look at that and I'm gonna make that banner smaller to see if we can fix that. Uh, where are we? So at the moment, yeah, that Fano is still my favorite on there. But we've added a few more guitars. Uh, yeah, damn it, I'm gonna miss that Fano. Anyway, okay, where are we? Queries, questions, comments. Goth Rider Creations, is it possible for me to cobble together an active pickup system using a battery and a mini amplifier? Uh, or do I need to buy a whole kit? I'm not sure what specialist parts go into that system. Cheers. I have no idea. I am not the person to ask for that sort of thing. Uh, jboogie164, regarding the museum, are you looking for any and every type slash brand of guitar or just very specific brands? I am interested, I am obviously having to slightly focus a little bit. I'm interested in every single brand. Uh, at the moment, I'm focusing on 50s and 60s uh, because that was, there was a, a period of unbridled creativity that I'm really annoyed that I've only I've not really thought about too much. Uh, so I'm, that's what I'm looking at now. It's, you know, uh, from the UK, Burns, for example, or um, uh, Watkins, etc. There's, there's, there's a lot of things from there. Vox, vintage Vox. Uh, now, on top of that, people come to a guitar museum and they expect to see Fenders and Gibsons and, and the like. Uh, and I am going to be, I am, I am going to be, uh, looking at buying eventually I would like to have a 59 list board etc that sort of thing would be that's a goal to have and always give yourself a goal that seems unattainable uh, it's that's my advice to you today but um, why would we we live in an age and in an age where Fender and Gibson are creating really good replicas of those instruments I saw a uh, a beautiful Fender 
Telecaster that they made that's a replica of a you know, 1952, I think it was, and it looked incredible and probably sounds incredible. And that would be the perfect thing because not only are we after a museum where people come and visit it to look at the guitars, we also want people to sit and play them and enjoy them and experience these things. So with a, you know, with a Blackguard, for example, uh, yeah. Most people aren't going to be allowed to touch that, really. But uh, a nice replica made by Fender, yeah. Uh, so those are the two things we're concentrating on at the moment. Eventually, I'm hoping to have a collection of uh, all of the significant guitars made in the UK and then Europe, and then, hell, we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. But uh, this is a... I am passionate about this. I am very excited about this, and it's going to be a whole... I think... I'm hoping that the museum actually makes Crimson itself pale into insignificance uh, due to the size and reach. I, I think it could be incredible. Oh. Where are we? Stephen Hatch says, neck through build with a neck break angle a la Gibson style. Possible? Your thoughts on the process? Thanks. Uh, yes, absolutely possible. Every, many neck throughs have got that sort of angle. You just draw it out on a piece of paper, paper from the side, uh, put the bridge on, put your string on, and then that just works out the angle. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, okay, Lisa Harshberger, uh, thanks Lisa for your support. Uh, it says, how are the, uh, she says raffles, we're not allowed to use the word raffles. How are the prize draws going? I don't think I've won anything, but wondering if it's working out for you. Um, most of the prize draws uh, sorry, none of the prize draws on Great Guitar Giveaway have yet been drawn. Uh, now, if I recall correctly, the first batch are finishing in two days, two hours, 18 minutes and 13 seconds, or thereabouts. Uh, now, those are all going to be drawn in a uh, on a live stream. Uh, yeah, on a live stream from Crimson Headquarters, probably well, almost certainly not on this channel. It's going to be on a great guitar, uh, great guitar giveaway YouTube account. I think that's been made. We'll see. Uh, but uh, yeah, you are still in with a chance. The Gibson Les Paul is still free tickets. There are still tickets available, and less than two thousand people have signed up for a free ticket to win that guitar. So. Hey, I mean, it still could be yours. There is a, a customized Epiphone SG Les Paul that I relate. There's that Fano Sonic Sphere, Dan Electro, and oh no, Dan Electro's ending sooner. There's a Telecaster, Jackson Randy Rhodes. There's all sorts. Uh, basically, most of these instruments are going to be up for about three weeks to start with, and then eventually. We're going to um, end up doing same day competitions, etc. when we've got enough people. Uh, but from the point of view of raising money for the museum, I don't think that there is going to be, uh, I don't think we're going to make a loss on any of these, apart from obviously the Les Paul where we, we put that out for free to draw people in. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think we may lose money on that Dan Electro, but again, hey, there's still nine days to go, so we'll see. Okay. Now. Now, okay. Um, Marsha Levine, my orange boy tabby named Pixel died this past Monday at 10 years old. I've lost both of my kittens in as many months. The cost of his cre cremation uh, means no tickets for drawings. Uh, I am sorry for your loss. We've, we've got a cat who is now far older than he should and he doesn't seem to have aged. I think he is a devil. Genuinely, uh, he's, I've had him longer than I've had any of my children and uh, he just looks exactly the same as this black cat. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I I would be absolutely bereft. I will be absolutely bereft when he finally shovels off this mortal coil. So yeah, my thoughts are with you. <sighs> Lisa says, what does processing mean on the giveaway site? Please. I assume, I think the Telecaster I can't see that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. The Telecaster has actually run out of tickets and I think that that might be marked as processing. Oh, come on. There we go. No, it says prize draw closed on that Telecaster. Uh, yeah, if you've had an email saying processing then that's probably your order if you've got a question about it though uh, drop us an email and uh, uh, we will get back to you there is a, a special there is a specific email address through the website through the contact page of the great guitar giveaway site uh, anonymous botch greeny replica I would love to have a greeny replica I really would uh, Uh, Lisa says, how about a timetable for definite vids, etc. for the next month then? I do not plan ahead that far. I will, however, guarantee that uh, with the new editors, etc., we are now looking at far more videos. Uh, we had a seven day period where there was a video every single day. And uh, we can actually keep that up once we've got a little bit of a head start. Uh, there has been some illness and, and other issues, sadly, recently uh, that have slowed that down. But uh, we're talking four or five videos a, uh, a week. So there we go. Uh, Redhead17 says, hmm, with regards to your ADHD, is the guitar buying taking the place of the watch buying? So much, so much. And the difference is that uh, with most of the guitars, I know, hey, this is something else that is going to come up again and again and again. And if I really want to keep one, I'll be able to keep one at some point, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I'm still looking for the perfect Telecaster for myself uh, to have at home here, not, not even the museum. And uh, whereas with the watches, I am loath to sell them. So yes, the guitar buying is taking the place of uh, of my watch obsession, which was, as we've discovered recently, not just about, hey, I like watches and the mechanisms and all that, because I do. It was also about the, oh, I've, I've, you know, that feeling of spending a stupid amount of money on something stupid. Um, and that's actually to do with the ADHD and the, and the dopamine rush that, the, that buying shit gives you. So yes, at the moment, um, I'm getting that rush by yeah, buying guitars to then give away and and doing the the raffles you know that conversation with somebody who's won something that they bought five tickets for for example and they've got a two thousand three thousand pound guitar or whatever it's incredibly it makes me feel really good so yeah there we go doom da dum be dum boom down Robert R. Ben, what is the scale length on the hand tool only build you're currently building? I have completely forgotten. I think it's relatively short. I think it's 630. Uh, 24 inches. 609.6 <laughs> centimeters. I happen to have the plans just over there and uh, yeah, it's written on there. Uh, will the guitar winners from the GGBO be auctioned or sold? I can't find the answer to this. Please help. Thanks. Uh, they will be uh, it's not going to be auctioned or sold. It's going to be on Great Guitar Giveaway, actually, uh, where you'll be able to buy a ticket to potentially win it in a prize draw. And uh, the the money raised after fees uh, is going to uh, Great Guitar Build Off. And I have to be so careful now that I've got two Great Guitar names. I'm so silly. Uh, and uh, with the Invitational, it'll be uh, the charity of the Builder's Choice, which in my case will be Great Guitar Build Off, of course. Um, the Professionals, uh, the money, half of the money goes to GGBO and half the money goes to the Builder themselves. Uh, but that is all, all good. 
Do you know what, Redhead17? I have not seen the 3D printed guitar on Dalrell Braun's YouTube channel. Uh, and with a compensated neck, too. I haven't seen that yet. Um, for some reason, he has not been showing up on my feed recently. Which is interesting. Uh, Walden Guitar Works, what happens if all the tickets on the Great Guitar Giveaway are sold before the end date of a certain guitar? Will the winner be announced earlier? At the moment, uh, no. It depends. So at the moment, we've had the first batch of bills for three weeks. From Tuesday, from Wednesday, from this coming Wednesday, there is going to be, unless something goes horribly wrong, there's going to be a live stream where we are going to live on on camera with uh, with the screens being shared and broadcast and all that jazz. Uh, we will be drawing all the winners during that live stream. So if, for example, um, the guitar finishes eight days earlier than it was supposed to, yes, it will be drawn in the next coming live stream. But we're not doing the system which the old software we used, which was Raffle, raffle.com. Uh, with them, it was just an automatic. There was no live stream. There was no number crunching. We're going to use uh, Google's random number generator and say, hey, we've sold uh, 800 tickets uh, in this prize draw. Um, you know your ticket number, so here we go. Oh, it's ticket number 723 who has won this instrument. And that's all going to be done live. And it's just more fun, basically. So in a limited way, yes, but I'm assuming in most cases it's probably not going to sell out. <sighs> that being said, as we develop and as we get enough users on the site, we will start doing shorter draws. We will start doing uh, single day only draws. We'll start doing instruments where, uh, say it's 10 pounds a ticket or 20 pounds a ticket, but there's only a hundred people um, joining in so that the odds are much, much more favorable. Um, so I'm going to be playing with it. I'm also bringing in pedals and hey, maybe amplifiers. Uh, I'd love to have a pedal a day go up on the site because that means I get to play with a pedal a day. Woohoo! Uh, so we'll see. It is evolving. It's very, very early days. But I must say that, uh, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a successful part of what we do. The Ginger Drum Tech says, in your hand tool only builds first episode when choosing the wood you said you didn't want to work with Paduk. Can I ask why? Paduk's red, it stains, it goes brown in the end anyway. Uh, it has a similar sort of sound to mahogany, in my opinion. In many cases, it's a bit harder, a bit brighter, but I just don't like working with it. Uh, I, if I was faced with Paduk or... Wenge, for example, I'd choose Paduke every day of the week, but uh, yeah, it's just not my most fun wood. So yeah, there's that. Okay. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Uh, J Hammer forty two. Good day, Mister Crow. Would a Kent with four pickups, four V forty four on off RSW. I understood some of those things. Mute bar and a Kent whammy have any value to restore? Uh, value is a difficult thing. For me, yes, absolutely. Uh, from a resale value. You never know. I, basically, the, your best bet. I haven't looked up. I haven't looked that price up myself. Go on Reverb. Go on eBay. Say what. See what they sell for, and go from there. Um, I spend. For me, the value is not the monetary value of the guitar. For me, a lot of the restorations that we'll do uh, will be on guitars worth a hundred pounds. But uh, it is the it's what's learnt during the process that keeps me going, and eventually, obviously, we've we've started you know putting a prize draw out and uh, and all of that. But uh, for me, making a video, teaching, experimenting, learning, imbibing all of this, and then sharing that knowledge, that's where the value lies. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm selling the the great guitar giveaway too much at the moment. Um, ba -da -ba -dum. 
Anthony Cunliffe, what scale lids would you use for a multi-short scale neck? I can't say I've seen one, though I'm certain it's been done before now. It depends exactly, it depends entirely on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, Big Unit says, uh, did you see the article I emailed you on Paul Reed Smith weighing in on the Tonewood debate? I saw that the email came through. Yeah. Yes, I did. Damn. <laughs> so I didn't reply to your email because I got stuck into the... Uh, into the article. Um, yes. I got stuck into the article and then got pulled away halfway through is actually what happened. Uh, I need to go back and uh, reread that. Um, uh, there's, yeah, Tonewood. Mm. Sean S. Hi Ben, would you ever consider selling some of your builds in South Africa? 100% of course. Uh, I mean, we ship worldwide, so uh, yeah. There, I'm pretty sure there is one or two there already, actually. <sighs> Card price, okay, so all the... X did it do was placed November 18 and is currently processing. Okay, uh, I think car price processing and that means that the order is being pla has been placed and everything is going through. Uh, potentially, we're waiting for the payments to come through, uh, but uh, we will look into that and I'll be able to answer you next week. Okay. Yeah, okay. Everybody's saying, yeah, processing. I will check out what that, uh, what that means. I'm not going to do that on stream right now. But we'll get there. Now. All right. Uh, I am very much running out of uh, energy here. Uh, Nick Guitar, by your opinion, is a 1.5 kilowatt, 900 euros. Uh, bands are powerful enough for rip cutting, book matching, a guitar list ball style tops. Yes, uh, but what you need to look for is the uh, the depth of cut. Uh, do you have a deep enough? Uh, do you have enough room to push, say eight inches through? The eight inches should be enough for most guitars. And can the guitar? Can the guitar? Can the bandsaw take a three quarter to an inch deep blade? That's what you're really after. Um, uh, Barry Christmas says you could do leveling kits, nut files, as well as pedals and stain kits, etc. Tools. I hadn't actually considered that. I seriously hadn't actually considered putting tools in the great guitar uh, giveaway. Damn, there we go. That's a very good point. Uh, Hell, we had considered doing a course, actually. So maybe that's something we'll do. Maybe that's something we'll do soon. It can take a 20 millimeter blade, go for it. That should be absolutely fine. Uh, if you're having to push the wood through to the point where the, the motor is struggling, then something is going wrong, your blade is not sharp enough, etc. Uh, or the wood is closing and, and grabbing the blade, that happens sometimes. Okay. Uh, Alexander Wareham uh, says, Hey man, I'm looking to do one of your courses, hopefully soon. Just wondered, do you have positions for tutors available? Any idea who, on who might meet that criteria? Is doing your three month course enough or not? Probably not, but um, no, almost certainly not. We need a little bit more experience than that, but it is a very good way to to get on the uh, on the road. Uh, generally, uh, teachers need to have sort of built ten or fifteen guitars uh, at least, uh, or had an apprenticeship of some sort, uh, basically. <sighs> However, I am looking forward to uh, meeting you and seeing you on the course. And yeah, you never know. We have employees who. 
not teachers, but who have been on three month courses who are employees now. Uh, that being said, the world's going to shit right now. And uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how many jobs will be open for now. Um, okay. 210 mil. Yeah, just over eight inches. I'd go for that pencil. I think that's fine. Now, uh, here we go. Lewis Brown. Ben, what is the best way to stabilize a spalted top? Uh, the best way is cactus juice uh, in a vacuum, and then you cook it, then you do it again, then you cook it, then you do it again, and then it's it's basically solid resin. Uh, and essentially the, the, the vacuum pulls the resin into the wood. Uh, it sucks it right in, and then you cook it into the wood, and you do that until, you know, a few times. Uh, super glue will do it, but yeah, uh, to a certain extent. But super glue is absolutely nasty, and uh, I'm never going to do that again. Douglas Sapoda says, I checked the emails I received from the Great Guitar Giveaway, and there are four that are giveaway participation confirmation that contain the entry number that Ben was talking about a few moments ago. Okay, so there may, there was an issue up until about the middle of the week where, uh, funnily enough, the email server wasn't... Uh, meaty enough to deal with the demand. So th there were issues with people uh, resetting passwords and not getting the email for 24 hours or 48 hours, etc. That was that. That has now been fixed. There may have been some issues with the processing as well. Um, at least the emails coming through saying that it's order confirmation, etc. But if you have got an order that is processing and not marked as Yeah. Uh, Douglas says the one that says processing is the one that contains the payment information. Yeah, that's just, hey, we've taken your payment details and the, the payment is, is going through. I'm sure of that. Um, close. Stephen Rigg, just about to wire up a set of your pickups. Do you know the wiring colors? Off the top of my head, no, but uh, I'm pretty sure they line up with Seymour uh, uh, Duncan because that's what I asked. Uh, that being said, I have also asked for there to be a little piece of paper that goes with the pickup saying, hey, this is what it's supposed to be. <sighs> uh, Douglas, thank you very much for that information. That's um, clarified that in my head. Johnny Love, hey Ben, I have a luthier built Les Paul shaped thin bodied semi-acoustic with a split in the back of the guitar. Any ideas? Cheers. Uh, if you can clamp it from the side and it'll close, then wax some glue in there and close it. If this happened recently, if it did not happen recently, then get some peroxide, uh, drip that in the crack. That will clean grease and dirt and stuff out of that. Then you put the glue in and clamp it up and go. If not, if you can't push it back together again, which is nine times out of ten, take a uh, take a wedge shaped knife uh, or a blade or something, and then basically scrape uh, inside the hole to make it fairly straight, but with wedged sides that are even and then you want to put a you want to glue a, a wedge shaped strip of wood matching wood preferably into there um, but yeah that's what I would do uh, Big Unit Guitar says I saw Brad Anger have used black super glue as a grain filler but he said it's really nasty with fumes and sanding <clears throat> and you really need goggles and a respirator when doing it it doesn't sound like fun it is not fun it is Absolutely not fun. Marshall, Marshall Levine says, I'm going to request some tools for Christmas and my birthday in January from family. If I can only get one, which leveling beam should I ask for first? 16 inch. Uh, yeah, with leveling beams. Yeah, 16 inch beam for sure. Uh, Beth McKellar. Hey, Beth, how are you doing? Says, hi, Ben. Nice to see you after your ages of me not being there. Hoping everyone is well. Uh, Paul and I are sipping away on a little Glenfiddich after dinner. Hi everyone. Uh, 
I, I don't drink very much, but uh, all of this talk of whiskey has got me thinking, mm, I need to stop this and go and have a, a nice little uh, uh, tipple. Anyway. Douglas Sapola, may the odds ever be in your favour. Absolutely. Vulcan Essences, I've just bought a ticket in Grey Guitar Giveaway and paid via PayPal. It worked smoothly, just to add another data point. Cheers, V. Thank you very much. If every single one of you goes and buys a ticket, then uh, um, lets me know how that goes, then can you... <laughs> That's so self-serving. Um, but no, I'm, that was an issue, actually. PayPal was something that was worrying us as well. Uh, but we seem to have smoothed out most of the issues here. Um, Barry Christian, is there a reason why it's only PayPal on the giveaway site and no debit cards? You um, you can use debit cards on the... So essentially, PayPal there's a PayPal button on every single listing, but if you put the if you click buy now and it goes into a shopping basket, click on the shopping basket, and then it gives you the options to pay via credit card, etc. Um, so yes, I do think that a, a a good portion of people are using credit cards. It's just uh, where you see it. Um, now I do think that I'm going to. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Damn, the questions keep on moving. Uh, David Oddie, any thoughts on neck shims? Josh used one the other day. I think neck shims are absolutely fine and valid. Um, Leo Fender, who, well, he's Leo Fender, uh, he, used, he used to collect people's business cards and uh, use them as neck shims in production fenders going out of the factory. Every single production fender had a shim. Just is what it is. We uh, now crimson guitars shims. Okay, crimson guitars wooden guitar neck shims. There we go. Currently available uh, on. Huh. Okay. Yes. So we we make we make full neck pocket length shims that uh, sit in the neck pocket and it's at a particular angle and uh, they work very very well um, and yeah I, I am a fan of them if, it, if it's needed then go for it if you can avoid it in the build process of course avoid it but the reality is if you've got a wooden neck and a wooden body and it's clamped together tightly you're going to transmit sound. If you've got a wooden neck, a wooden body, and a wooden full-length shim between the two and it's clamped together nicely, it's the same thing, basically. <sighs> okay. Now, no, it's a, it's a pleasure, Johnny, no worries. Okay. Uh, which any software you use to learn the melody of guitar? Uh, how to play guitar? I don't at the moment. <laughs> um, Andy Bom uh, or Boom, uh, I, forgive me for the pronunciation, says I just bought two tickets but I'm not saying what for. I don't want to encourage others and ruin my odds. That's the thing. So I'm thinking about putting up, I'm thinking about, we're changing the prices, we're experimenting with the prices, but I, I, I like the idea of slightly higher prices and lower odds on the guitars as well. Um, but we shall see. How to fill or fix plastic binding, polished frets on my guitar. Fret rubbers then Dremel with a buffing wheel, bit into the binding with the wheel like an idiot. I have done that. About four millimeters times a half a millimeter. Is epoxy okay to fix? Uh, if you have the original binding, if, you've, if this is a guitar that you've built, and you have access to the actual, uh, some offcuts of the binding. If you're lucky, you can mix the binding with acetone, which will actually dissolve it into a, a paste that you can then use to fill the gap. If not, yes, an epoxy, a colored epoxy would work. Colored superglue would work. Um, if you can match the color, which you probably can't. Uh, you could also, Nail varnish would actually probably work as well. I think that any repair, any fill, 
uh, would be visible to a certain extent. But um, these things, they are sent to try us. Uh, my wife was shouting at me earlier, shouting at me. She was telling me that I'm, I'm you're a, you're a bodger. You, 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 yeah. I was building stuff in the house, and there are, yes, I'm a professional bodger. That is what I do. Shit happens, and I find a fix for it. Um, the amateur just gives up. There's a dog trying to get in. You can't come in, puppy. So, uh, so yeah, it is what it is. Okay. Graham B, uh, I just wanted to say thanks for all the extra content. I'm just loving it. I still need a bun fix once a week, but I'm glad you're getting some more time for your family and yourself. <laughs> That's a big assumption. I'm filming stuff that hasn't been uh, put up yet. But uh, no, I really do appreciate it. I have wanted to have other luthiers working on the channel for years, and I'm finally at the point where I do and uh, and it's great there's going to be so much cool stuff coming up over the next year or two um freaking really enjoying it um uh, ferdinand j ephraim says there is another guitar giveaway website yes that's guitar gear giveaway guitar gear giveaway i should everything i love alliteration i probably should have named it something uh, that wasn't quite so similar to theirs, but it is what it is. Uh, no, that is not my site. That's a different one. Uh, we are the Great Guitar Giveaway. Ooh. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Alrighty. Look, everybody, I am going to call this a night because the, the dog is outside. I'm not going to let him in. He's supposed to be going to the loo. We had a bit of an accident this morning, so that is to be avoided. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to call this a day. I've got a hell of a lot to do. Um... <laughs> Anonymous Botch. I know that cupboard door is hanging at 45 degrees. It's a feature. It's... Uh... Yeah, that's, okay, so here's the story. Okay, Rob Tootle, when, when is GGBO 23 starting so I can plan my next build, guitar version of the Falkion to enter it? Uh, I will be announcing the dates relatively soon. Uh, I think it's gonna be similar to... <sighs> Damn, I'm tired, similar to last year. Okay, so the, um, the story is that uh, we, have essentially split the lounge in half so that my daughter can have uh, a bedroom. We've got a three bed house at the moment and we've got three children and my wife and I. And at a certain point, the teenage boy needs a bedroom as a zone. So it was either move, which was the plan, and sell the house and buy another one, etc. And then the, just the world went to shit. So I'm like, screw it. We're just gonna reduce the family space give Jasmine a new room and I built it entirely based around the size of this bed that I ordered from Ikea which is fine except for the fact that uh, the listing says da 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 such and such a bed uh, 90 centimeters by 200 centimeters great the bed's 200 centimeters long I, I made the room you know two point 215 centimeters long etc uh, the bed's actually like 230 so I've had to essentially build this bed into the room and it's got drawers and things underneath that are built in etc it's been a major bodge job I was routing holes into this wall that I built last weekend <laughs> uh, two weekends ago and uh, absolute bodge job but it looks amazing there's fairy lights everywhere and that's uh, all good and the boys are going to get their own bedrooms uh, until uh, yeah, until we sell this place when the markets calm down. Anyhow, uh, okay, Shockhort says, you know how to play electric guitar. Uh, I have used the Fender app. I have used many, many different things, but generally I just spend time on, uh, on YouTube when I'm trying to learn something new. Uh, and you hear the dogs in the background. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Waffle says, don't you go on about building before you have your parts? I, I bought the parts 
knowing what size it was and built the room to fit. And uh, yeah, I ended up being three centimeters too small, even though I gave myself 15 centimeters more than I thought I needed. Just infuriating. But anyway, it's all fun and games and it's all fixed now. Um, now, yes, Stilgar, I know 90 by 200 centimeters is the mattress size, not the entire bed. I know that now. And uh, yeah, I feel like a right numpty, I really do. Okay. <laughs> um, everybody, I really, really, really appreciate your support. Have a fantastic week. Uh, I am going to be going to headquarters tomorrow to finish my GGBO build, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, there's just, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff happening and uh, I wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for you. So thank you for your support. But for now, I will say good night. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. Cheers.